make this record hot. Never give in, never quit. This isn't about a quick win. This is about establishing a mindset that will allow you to consistently win at life despite what you may be encountering or going through at any given time. Now, I just want to actually ask you a question this morning. Uh, I'm actually on my way into the office. Uh, I got a couple of things I want to do there today before I head to the gym. Um, and then uh, spend some time with the family. Uh, this is our youngest grandson's third birthday. And so, um, you know, we're going to just do family uh, for the most part, uh, I guess, the rest of the day. But anyway, how do you start your day? I know it sounds cliche-ish. I know you have probably heard it a million times, but I can't tell you uh with no amount of specificity, no matter how well I communicate, the gravity and importance of starting your day off right. Um, it is immensely important to start your day off right. There's no shortage of studies and research and observations that prove how you start your day impacts your entire day. You can get a good idea of how you start your day and how your day is going to go by uh, you gonna how your day is gonna go by how you start your day. Uh, it doesn't mean that starting your day a certain way will eliminate challenges, will eliminate problems, but it does uh, impact how you confront them, how you deal with them, how you perceive them, how you interpret them, and how you interpret things is your perception, and your perception becomes your reality. If you perceive something as, oh Lord, here goes something else, oh Lord, here's another thing, oh, then you start to become the victim. You start to become a person that's not in control of your destiny. You, you become a person that's now at the whim of the movements of life around them instead of being a person in control of your situation because no matter what happens, you're going to figure it out. Now, you start your day off right. You start your day off with the right mindset. Uh, my mindset is always grat gratitude first and then empowerment second. So the first thing I'm going to establish is a reason to be grateful. The second thing I'm going to establish is that no matter what happens in this day, I'm built for it. I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to confront it. And at the end of the day, no matter how long it takes, I will win because that's how I'm made and I can do it. It's a mindset and it's going to frame how I engage everything that I encounter. The thing is, if you wake up in the morning and your first couple of experiences are negative, and you don't have a process through which you counter that and improperly engage it and reestablish the right mindset, you're gonna have a cascade. Because even things that aren't that bad are gonna be viewed through the lens of what you're going through, which makes it better than it really is. You've gotta be very careful because life is about the lens you see, through, see, uh, see things through. Your, what, your current state of mind is the filter through which everything you experience is uh, interpreted. So what you've got to be able to do is set yourself in the most optimal position to interpret things in a way that give you the most expeditious and productive um, uh, ability to overcome and deal with it. You're not going to circumvent the struggles of life that's not going to happen. The vicissitudes of life are going to roll into your paradise at the most inopportune times. That's a guarantee of life. Whether you go after something huge or if you try to lay in your uh, corner of comfort, change is going to find you. Disruption is going to find you. Delay is going to find you. Disappointment is going to find you. You don't get to hide from the challenges and, 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 and things of, uh, of that sort of life. 
the, what you do get to do is determine how you're going to deal with it, how you're going to confront it and engage it. And that's the important thing. That's the thing that's huge. That's the thing that matters. So what you have to sit up and say is how do I start my day? That's what I want to share with you today. I'm going to tell you how I start my day. And then you can uh, adjust it to how you want to do it. There are a couple of rules when I start my day. Number one is I never let my heat... My, I never let my feet hit the floor when I wake up without first establishing a reason to be thankful and grateful. At this particular stage in my life, it's like the easiest thing in the world. Why? Because when I wake up and I look to the left of me, there's my wife's laying there. I watch her. When she takes that first breath of me observing her, I'm like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. I have the most beautiful and supportive wife in the world to me and every person should feel that way about your spouse and if you don't then that, that that means you just need work it's not that you expect your spouse to be perfect it's not that you expect your spouse to make you happy being happy is your personal responsibility i'm going to get into that and on another time that's not your, your spouse is there to create an environment that you can thrive in an environment where you can experience and explore and be there they are there to create an environment of encouragement or an environment of peace, uh, an environment of admiration to a certain level, and we both admire each other. We both support each other. We both encourage each other. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, yes, I haven't even gotten out of bed yet, and I'm already on a 10. Why? Because I have so much to be grateful for, and that ain't all of it. That's just the start of it, but it sets the mindset. Now, now you have to understand, gratitude is the gateway for abundance. Without a heart of gratitude, it's almost impossible to receive anything on a consistent basis that will be considered abundant. Why? Because the lack of gratitude sets the gate. You got to be thankful for what you have before you can start uh, accumulating more. You got to learn how to be thankful for what you already have, who you already are, how far you've already come. All of those things are immensely important. So what do you do? You sit up and you say, okay, you know what? I'm going to find a reason to be thankful. Uh, number one, I'm breathing. I'm, I'm, I'm able to think clearly. And from that point on, I can establish, because of the ability to think clearly, I can now establish through that very same thought process how I'm going to take on my day. And so that puts me in the control seat or the cockpit of my life. And I'm going to learn how to live life at its fullest while taking on the challenges from the cockpit cockpit of my life. I'm flying the plane. I'm, 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 I'm navigating. No one else is doing it. No situation is doing it. No circumstance is doing it. I am. I will encounter the circumstances and I will navigate through them because I am the captain of my soul. I'm the captain of my life. I'm the captain of what's happening here. It's my responsibility to get through it. That's an awesome thing because it says no matter what I go through, I will figure it out. And then I tell myself in my prayer and meditation phase, which is another part I get through, here's here's a rule. The, the, the first rule is the foot don't hit the, the foot, the, the foot, my feet don't hit the floor until I establish gratitude. Second, I do not open my phone until I have completed my prayer and my meditation, which can be anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Normally, even after I complete it, it's normally for the first hour of the day, I don't open my phone. And here's why that's important. The moment you open your phone, you surrender your personal sovereignty. What I mean, you don't get to control what's on that phone when you open it. And what, what's on that phone when you open it will have an impact on your state, your mental state, your emotional state, your psychological state, your spiritual state. If it's great news or some something you've been looking for and waiting for, it's going to put you on a high. If it's not good news, it's bad news, now you started your day off on a low. And even if you've established gratitude, now you've probably undone much of it, if not all of it, because you've countered it with some bad news that's got you, your, emo your emotions are going to move you a lot until you learn how to manage them. So you gotta be careful on how you expose yourself to things that trigger you emotionally, one way or another. You wanna remain as uh, level and kill, uh, even kill as possible because that's where you're gonna be able to think clearly. Too happy, 
still not thinking clearly. Why? Because your emotions have triggered different physiological responses, including where your blood flow is going and, and a bunch of other things that deal with your brain and your ability to process information. You don't want to make decisions when you're overly elated. You definitely don't want to make decisions when you're overly down. Uh, so what do you do? you got to learn how to manage the kill. But what happens when you open that phone is you're at the mercy of what's on it. Whatever text message somebody sends you, whatever email you got, what's on the news, what's on social media, somebody did, did say something on one of your posts that just really upset you, all these different things you're at the mercy of because you opened that phone before you set a state of mind that would allow you to properly respond and evaluate the situation and, and be in a better situation. It doesn't mean that when you finish doing whatever it is you do to set your state, that you're not gonna encounter uh, bad news on some days. It's gonna happen. But if your state is set, if you've already told yourself there's so much in this world to be grateful for, that hasn't changed. There's still a lot to be grateful for. If you've told yourself, I'm built for this, there's absolutely nothing I'm going to encounter, that I can't overcome, then that 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 applies to what you're dealing with right now. It seems bad. It's it, it may be horrible, but the thing is, you will not only survive it, you will overcome it, you will conquer it, you will rise to the occasion because you have everything it takes. You are connected with the mind of the Almighty, the mind of God, that universal mind that knows everything. You're connected to it. You have a direct access to it. You may not have learned how to uh, connect to it on an ongoing basis or be immediately uh, accessible, uh, be able to immediately access it, but it's there and you'll learn that. So there's no problem you're going to face that you can't overcome. That's the truth about this. If you're still breathing, you're still in the fight and you have the, uh, the capacity to win. So um, I want to encourage everyone to learn how to uh, set your state. So then after I get up, um, when I wake up, I establish something to be grateful for before my feet hit the floor. Then when I turn over hit the floor, I grab the phone, but I don't open it. I take it down uh, to my home office. Uh, I'm on my way to my offsite office, uh, but to my home office, I sit down there. Uh, I pray, I pray and I meditate. My prayer meditation is definitely probably not like yours. Uh, I do a lot of listening, uh, more than I do talking. Uh, I figure like if, you know, it's God. I think he kind of knows what's going on. Uh, there's not a whole lot I need to say, but there's a whole lot of listening I need to do because prayer is about revelation. Uh, regardless of the, uh, regardless of whatever faith you, you practice or claim, the relationship with you and God is just that. It's a relationship between you and God, and it has to be personal. Uh, and if you haven't developed a real, true, personal relationship with God, where there's a uniqueness about how you interact with God, you don't have all the tools necessary to truly optimize your life. And that's something you need to work on. Uh, but that, that's another talk at another time. But what you can do is spend time in a place where it's positive, where you understand I'm in the presence of the Almighty. I'm in the presence of God. And in the presence of God, there's peace. The presence of God that's power and the presence of God I start to understand that anything that I set my mind to do I can actually do I'm never trapped poverty isn't my life and my lot in life suffering is not my lot in life none of these things I have to stick in and stay in I can rise in my life I can rise out of poverty I can rise out of suffering I can come out of an abusive relationship I can leave a traumatic past behind I can do all of those things I can build a strong productive family I can do all of those things if I focus and I center myself and I stop allowing my circumstances to trigger me and, uh, and, and set my mood, set my tone, set my expectations. Uh, I, I will start to anticipate the highest things, the most phenomenal things, the most exceptional things for myself. And that's where you start. So it's how you start your day. How you start your day is going to have a massive impact on how your day goes and how your day ends. You've got to take the reins of that. Don't surrender your personal sovereignty by grabbing that phone. That phone is a trigger and you don't control what's on the other side. But what you do control is how you approach and start your day. Make it a point to start your day in a place that sets you in the highest possible state so that you reach the highest possible level of energy release so that you're producing on a hurt 
hertz uh, scale somewhere above 500 up, 500 to 750 is where you want to be on the hertz scale and the energy you release. And that's about positivity. That's love. That's gratitude. That's learning new things is a very high uh, energy uh, vibration. When you're learning new things, the vibrational scale is off the charts, like 750. So those are the things you can control. You literally can control that every day. So that's the thing I encourage you to do. Look, no matter where you're gonna be watching this video, there's gonna be some resources in the uh, description box. Look, invest in yourself. If it's nothing but time, some of the resources are free, but some of them are more in depth, more intense and more uh, focused on immediate results. Whatever you do, invest in yourself. Start doing something to change your life. Stop waiting on life to change for you because you don't control the direction it goes. On that note, I'm gonna get off here. You people, uh, find something unbelievable to do today. And it doesn't mean it has to be grand. It just needs to be pure. Call someone you haven't called in a while. Tell them you love them. Stop by somebody you don't know and bless them with a kind word or bless them financially. Find something that you can do that you don't have to do but that will change someone else's life. And start making that a practice and watch what happens. On that note, I'm about to get out of here and get in this office and do what I've got to do. And you guys have an unbelievable day. As I always say, I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. I challenge you to do I'm the same thing. Now, as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.